Amen. How many of you love the Lord this morning? Amen. Amen. Praise God. I love the Lord this morning. Amen. He's been so good to me. Praise God. I tell you what, I wouldn't let nobody out praise me. Because you don't know like I know what the Lord has done for me. He's been so good. I can't tell it all. Been good to you, little Jay? God's been good to you. Amen. He's like, yes, yes, he's been good. He's been good. I believe Pastor Bland has a word for me. Amen. I don't know what you came to do. I came to hear the word. I came to lift him up. I came to give him the glory. And I came to give him the praise. We're going to step back and we're going to listen to the word of God. Say amen for Pastor Bland as he comes. Amen. Good morning. Get your Bibles. Let's turn to 1 Peter and start there. I guess my mama approved of what I have on. She said, boy, you look like you dress like you're going to the cross this morning. But you know, that's mama. She can get away with that. You can't, Tyrone. You got one coming. You just wait on it now when it comes. 1 Peter, the fifth chapter. First Peter, the fifth chapter. You know, family is very important. Do you have anybody, if they're not here with you this morning, just in your mind, can you think about somebody that you're grateful for? Well, can you look across and look at somebody that you're grateful for? Amen. Amen. Uh, B, it's, it's bad when you can't appreciate anything till it's gone. That's a bad thing. That's kind of foolish. They say, what, uh, the old saying is, you don't miss your water until you will? So you don't miss your baby till she said bye-bye. Thank you, Jesus. That's a bad thing. Hey, Amen. Well, Brother Boy, you know a wise person would just get in their mind and say, you know what? While I got a chance. I'm going to thank the Lord for what he has done. Because you see, the, the, the work of the enemy is to keep you depressed. Yes. It's to keep you complaining, Brother Willie. It's to keep you all messed up. You see, nobody can give life but God. Amen. And so, Satan could not stop your life. Even you couldn't stop it. As foolish as you've been in your life and as destructive as you've been, You've done enough stuff right now for your life not to be nothing. But God's mercy and grace, God orchestrated your foolishness in such a way that you came out smelling like a rose. You don't look like what you've been through. You don't look like what you've been through. And the, but so Satan could not, Sister Angela, stop that. But what he does try to do, I found out Brother Davis is, he tries to keep you from enjoying what God has given you, Mother Brayson. God has given you children, and God given you grandchildren, and, and Satan tries to organize in such a way where you don't even enjoy your own children. But then we come this morning to do battle with, with, with Satan. But you see, you can't do battle. Can, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Every damnable thing that would exalt itself against the mind of God. And so we come together in order, Brother George King, to get the mind of God in order to find the way to success. Because he has given us the victory, but victory only comes through faith. Faith only comes through uh, my knowing, Brother Dennis, and understanding the word of God. Faith come by hearing and hearing the word of God. And so then, Brother Tyrone, if I can get a word for my situation, just a word. Amen. If I can get a word for my situation, and if God can bless me, Sister Vivian, to believe that word, then it will cause me to overcome what Satan has set out to destroy me with. Because we have an enemy. We have an enemy to our soul, and we can't see him. Because he is a spirit and he's invisible to us. But God has given us the tools that we need. 
we start out with elementary things, and the first thing is, is that I must believe that this is the word of God. Amen. If I don't believe God, God can't help me. All right. All right. He put it like this, Mother Brewer. He said, without faith, it is impossible to please God. I don't come here to see how many folk going to come. I don't come here for that. Right. I mean, I wish that, that, that everybody wanted it, but that, that's not my main reason for coming to see how many folk come. All right. But I come here, Sister Tracy Coney, to get a word for my life. Amen. Because I want you to know something. You don't lay down with me at night. Right. You, 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 don't, you don't go. We, I can't even explain to you. Because I live inside. You see the outside. But I live on the inside. And and, and, and Satan fights my mind. You know, it's nice to have money in the bank. It's nice to have material things. But what I found out that it's not so much the material things or the little money that you have access to, but some peace. Just, just, just some peace of mind. And that's what we want to talk about. We're just leaving a series uh, about overcoming, and I thank the Lord for that. Uh, the last message was just dynamic. Uh, Lord didn't let us leave Sean to overcoming without dealing with overcoming anxiety. Overcoming because Satan always threatens you. No matter how good it gets, he always said, yeah, but this is going to go wrong or that'll go wrong. But what I know, Mother Bracey, is, is that there is no situation that gets too hard for my God. I've got some experience, Brother Brimley, with him. I, I've been through some low spots with him. And he never, ever left me alone. So then I must take a stand with my confidence in God. And then God has never left us without a word. I said, well, God, where are we going to go now? He said, well, what I want to tell you to talk about now, we want to start a series on the defamation of God. The defamation of God. Slander of God. Lying on God. Ignorant, unlearned, greedy men have lied on God. And the thing about it is, is that many times, Brother Dennis, people would rather believe a lie. Right. Well, just look at how many people watch TV. I ain't talking about just watching. I'm talking about incessantly. I'm reading a book, and the book says that is, there's one sure way to be successful and one sure way to be unsuccessful. The sure way to be successful, unsuccessful is cut the TV on. And the sure way to be successful is turn it off. You sit up and watch a lie all day long. And never actually uh, try to seek the truth about your own life. You watching other folk lives and don't know nothing about your own. The lies that have been told on God. We're going to start this morning here. Mother, I, I just, I'm just amazed at God because we're going on now, what y'all, 12 years? That's right. And I used to wonder, I said, well, God, wh wh what, what are we going to talk about now? And the Lord had to just sit me down, Brother Di, and told me, he said, look, how many times I got to tell you that I don't need your help? <laughs> if God is going to give us a word, then God has to give us a word, <laughs> but he just need us to get out the way in order to get a word. And I'm going to tell y'all something. I've been blessed over here at Manasseh Christian Fellowship. I've been blessed. And you see, one of the problems of folks that keep them mother bland from being grateful is Satan tell you that you've been like this all the time. But it wasn't like this. It wasn't like this. I couldn't come to church. And then church members come up to you and smile and laugh with you and look you in the eye and whatever. Because most of them, I felt like they had been talking about me before I saw them. I couldn't come to church and a difficult passage of scripture like Numbers get it explained to me in such a way that I understood it. And so, I'm so grateful that it's not like it used to be. I'm grateful that God 
made a way. But you see, what Satan wants to lie, like God is not going to help you or God is not going to make a way for you. The defamation of God. Let's start with this on uh, 1 Peter, the 5th chapter and the 6th verse. Let's go from here. You there? Here the Bible says, humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. So in other words, uh, uh, other words, Mother Bland, God has always wanted to exalt me. That's the first lie. You see, I've been around folks, Sister Linda Patterson, that always tried to hold me down. I've been around, I ain't talking about outside the house, I'm talking about sometimes in the family. That they could not stand. Do you know that, that, that most people can't stand for you to be blessed? Amen. That's true. That, that it bothers them. That's crazy. It's mind-blowing. What does it take away from you? That's right. That God is blessing me, but people are wired in such a way that when they see you riding in something that you work so hard for, <laughs> that you're making payments on every month, that that, that bothers them. And so then, what they do is, they can't stop you from riding in it. What they do is, they say certain stuff to you. That cause you to leave them. And when you leave them, you got in your foolish mind why they said it. They said it because they can't stand you. They said it because they want to diminish your worth. You see, if you don't know your worth, then you don't know how to treat you. I, I, my wife got a saying, man, and I just love it, and that is, you got to learn how to pull your own little happy wagon. You sitting around waiting on somebody else to make you happy, you got to learn how to pull your own little happy. If you like to eat that red lobster, you should quit waiting on somebody to take you to red lobster, quit waiting on somebody to go to red lobster, get your money and go sit at the table and eat what you want to eat. God has always meant for me to be on top and not on the bottom. Uh, so I need to get that straight right now. Yeah. And especially the colored folks. It's hard to be around your own people. Because your own people many times are the ones that try to keep you down. Uh, they they the first one that want to talk about that you think you this or you think you that. Are you trying to get lifted up? Are, are God going to have to bring you down? No, that's what you're hoping. You're hoping that I'll fall. You, you're hoping that we won't be able to make it. But I got the news. I said, notice on the devil today that if God be fucked, he's more than the world against me. And so don't you worry about what I got or what I don't have. If I don't have it another day, I'm riding in it today. If we don't live here another month, we living here today. Amen. Lying on my God. You lied on my God because you did not want me to know my father. Because you see, when a person knows their father, it causes them to be stable. It causes them to be solidified. Uh, I raised two boys. And one thing that Vanda Jr. and Jeremy both told me is, he said, you know what? Out of all Dexter that went on in the house, you didn't do a lot of things like we thought you should do it. But we always felt protected. We always knew that wasn't nobody ready to come in there. I tell you what, sometimes when mine was raised, coming up, I used to go up in the schoolhouse like I was the superintendent of the schools. You might have a PhD and you might have a title and you might be the superintendent, but these my children. These right here. And so I don't really know what you're going to do with the rest of them. 
But you're looking at these and trying to put them in a category because the color of their skin or because of where they came from or whatever. But these belong. When you know who your father is. Yes, sir. There's a difference between stable and unstable folk. Because there's none of us that the winds of life is not going to. You, it's, there's going to be some upsetting and down. Right? There's going to be some adversities that come your way. And if you're not stable, you're not like a tree that's planted by the rivers of water. You're not going to be able to stand. First Peter, the fifth chapter, he says, humble yourself, therefore, under the mighty hand of God. Another reason I'm glad to be over here in Manasseh. I ain't, I ain't got no man. I got the cow tattoo. Grinning and laughing in his face and wondering, is he all right with me and, and, and all this? No, no. Uh-uh. Then they got enough nerve, Brother Willie, now to try to ask me, do, do I want to be up under? No. Don't you need a covering? <laughs> now, here we are. Almost 12 years in, we got eight acres of land. I've got what I call a nice building. Amen. And, and what I call a nice building, it's nice enough for me. I don't need nothing with gold chandeliers and all that. I ain't got that in my house. But it's nice enough for me. I mean, it's cool in the summer and, and hot in the winter, you know. It's, the bathrooms are very nice, thanks to Carl Ray and others. It's, it's, everything is... Everything is paid for. We ain't struggling. We're not asking folk for money or whatever because the Bible says that God is able to make all grace to abound towards you, always having sufficiency. You see, grace will cause you to always have what you need. In other words, it don't make no difference that the devil don't want you to have it. I got about two or three folks that run up out of here right now and said, Pastor, they didn't want us to have it, but we got it anyway. And you think I ain't going to rejoice about it? The devil said no, but God said it belonged to you. The Bible said the kingdom of heaven suffered violence and the violence take it by force. God ain't never meant you to be timid about him. Never meant for you to be timid about him. I know that when he was here, they took him and put him upon a cross. I know they nailed him to the cross. I know they beat him. I know they spit in his face. I know they talked to him any kind of way. But it wasn't because he couldn't. He did it out of love to us. But John on the Isle of Patmos saw Jesus coming back in Revelation the 20th. And he wasn't coming. Ain't nobody going to spit in his face when he come back. He came riding upon a horse. His name was Faithful and True. And he's coming back with wrath upon this wicked world. Right. Yes. He says here that he, that he may exalt you in due time. Let me just go ahead and take my subject so I can preach. Look at your neighbor. Look him right there in the eye and just tell him, say, I'm so glad he cares. I'm, I'm so glad. I'm so glad he cares. I'm going through some things. I, it's some stuff that I really don't like. If the, I've got some mountains to climb. I, I've got some valleys to go through. I've, I've, I've got some adversities that's in my way. But I, I come in this morning to get a word from the Lord to say, I'm, I'm, I'm so glad. I'm so glad that he cares. Brother Willie Keller, I've, I've been to, had some down sittings. I've made mistakes. I've, I've, I've disappointed myself. I've disappointed others. I've, I hadn't lived up to even what I wanted to myself. But, but thank God. I'm so glad he cares. You see, it's, it's bad when, when you think somebody don't care about you. It's bad when somebody has told you that it's something about you that made them not care about you. And that's what, that was so frustrating to me about church is that they had me on a performance-based approval. They had me, Sister Vivian, that, you know, if you live right, then God will bless you. And, and I'm doing the best that I know to do, but, but, but I was kind of like Paul in Romans, the seventh chapter, uh, that the things that I said, I wasn't going to. 
I found myself doing. I said, oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me? You see, they lied to me about my father because they told me that my father was angry with me. They told me that my father, Mother Brewer, was going to bring wrath on my head. I had ignorant and unlearned men that was not even studying the Bible trying to tell me about God. They take stupid stuff like a rainstorm coming in and said, this is God mad at y'all. They take horrendous stuff like Katrina, the defamation of God. Y'all, Katrina was one of the most terrible things that ever happened in the United States. It came in and people died and lost their life and, and were displaced. Some of the people still displaced now. And ignorant preachers took that opportunity because you won't read the Bible because you won't get on your knees and get a revelation of who God is. You represent to those people that God sent that storm because he was mad at y'all down. The defamation of God. Lying on God. Tell somebody I'm so glad he cares. I'm so glad he cares. I, I, all of us go through life when we think somebody care about us. All of us go through life where we thought that I, I would have thought that you would have been there. You ever been in that situation? You had something that happened. Maybe somebody died or something. Or, or maybe you came through a financial struggle or something. Maybe that you just was having a difficult time in life, Madeline. And, and you just said, you said I, 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 show, I thought they would have been there. I would have thought they at least would have stopped by. I would have thought they would have asked. I, I, I thought that they would have cared. But I tell you what, when you know that God cares about you, when you know that no matter how low I get, no matter how depressed that I get, and I'm going to tell you what, I have checked into the hotel not to check out. That I'm just so tired about life and suicide thoughts. I hadn't had them very, very much lately, Brother Brewer. But I used to be just, just plagued with depression and suicide thoughts. That I'm just tired. That what's the use? And a lot of that was because preachers lied to me about who I was. See, if you value who you are, you don't destroy stuff that you value. And you see, that is no, that's, that's no aspersion on my wife or my mom or anybody because people can't give you a value. You have to get the value from within, from God. And so when you give me a false sense of God's uh, uh, value of me or how God feels about me, you mess me up. It makes no difference how many A and B selections we have. It makes no difference how much money we raise at the church. It makes no difference what kind of new building that we move into. What it comes down to, Sister Linda Patterson, is what do I believe about me? Amen. See, they asked Jesus one time, they said, can any good thing come out of Nazareth? But you see, Jesus always knew his father's love for me. When he stood to pray, he said, Father, not for my sake, but for the ones that's around. Because I know that you always hear me. And that's the reason right now I probably will never be a member of any kind of ministerial alliance. I never fool with none of these preachers or nothing like that. And the reason is, is because you want to give me a false impression of what God thinks about me. God is not angry with me. God is not angry with me. And I know why God is not angry with me. Not because I haven't done anything wrong. But God is not angry with me. Because he came down and took on flesh. And he got on a rugged cross. In order to receive all the wrath of God against sin upon himself. 
And so now, God does not impute sin unto men. Amen. Preachers spend the whole service preaching about sin when they're supposed to be preaching the gospel. There is nobody that has no sin. So if it takes not having sin in order for God to like you, you in trouble. How do I know it? I know it because the Bible says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And so therefore, my only uh, remedy is to accept Jesus as my personal Savior. Now, they said that, but they don't mean it. Because they say you're accepting Jesus as the Savior, but then they tell you to go save yourself. Mother Brewer, if I got a banknote down there and the banknote get paid off for $5,000, if you go pay the banknote off for $5,000, I don't want the bank calling me. Amen. I don't want no letters. I don't want no calls. Why is that? Because my note has been paid off. Amen. Jesus paid my sin debt. Thank you, Lord. I, I don't care what nobody thinks. He did not shed his blood for nothing. That's right. yeah. The defamation. The defamation against, against God saying that God is still, still basing his approval on you based on your performance. It's not true. It's not true. That's all right. I got Bible on. I quit waiting on them to read their Bible and I started reading my own. He says right here, Casting all your care all right, all right. upon him. I want y'all to know something. I'm in the right church this morning because life get hard sometimes. Right. Life get hard. Let me tell you. One time I was getting ready to commit suicide. I had money in every bank in this little town. I was driving a brand new Lexus with Coach Level on the inside. If you had been looking on the outside, you would have thought, ooh, I sure wish I was him. But it wasn't. What was on the outside, baby? It was what was going on in the inside. Amen. Casting all your care upon him. I was going to a church. Thank you, Jesus. Where all they did was talk about how holy they were. All they did was talk about how great they were. Ain't nobody tell me about Jesus. Because the best of us, the best of us, is still messed up. All right, then, if you think you ain't, go talk to the children. The children will tell you how messed up they are. The children will tell you just how messed up they think. Self-righteous. He says, casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Go over to 1 Thessalonians. Let's look at 1 Thessalonians. I'm so glad he cares. I ain't. I got in my mind the night I told little Jay, I said, let's go over grandma's scene. Let's, let's, let's spend the night over the grandma's scene. How, let me tell y'all something. I ain't never known no love like what my mom got. I've been rotten in my life, y'all. I ain't lying. I, I've been rotten. And a lot of it I didn't care. If you wasn't good and rotten, I didn't want to be around you. I, I ain't like folks drink light beer. Thank you, Jesus. The worst you were, them the kind of folk, my, my mama tell you, the worst folks in town, brother David, them the folks I went and called my friend. Them the kind of folks, I ain't never wanted to be around folks on the honor roll or nothing. I wanted to be around Slim Harpo and Humdanger them. I, I just, thank you, Jesus. But you know what? Out of all that, my mama never turned her face. My mama never turned her face. See, I know what love is. If you got anybody that loved you, if you got anybody that loved you, I remember my wife, but then getting up speaking at church. Here I am going along with her and everything. I, prodigal son, I should have stayed at home. But here I am, then going to sit on the front seat like I'm really a husband and all that, you know. And my wife, stepped, now I know the church folk were sitting around waiting on what, he gonna, what she going to say about him. And she stood, I'll never forget, it was over at Truvine. I can call names because I don't care. We was over there. 
And she, she stood up there and she said, you know, I thank God for my husband, this man of God, the priest of my house. She lifted up. I'm telling you what, I know what love would do. If you think, if you know that somebody loved you, it will bring you up out of what you, it's called redeeming love. But when you condemn folk, when, when, you, when you point out every, everything that's wrong with a person, they never will be able to lift their head. They never will be able to be. who. That's the reason that he came down and he died. The Bible said that when we were yet without strength, Christ died for the, you lied on my father. You lied on my daddy. You lied like he would never love me until I straightened up. You lied like he would never love me until I stopped smoking, until I stopped drinking, and until I stopped running the street. When you do that, then, he, then the Lord is going to accept you. But you see, the truth of the matter is, Madeline, 2,000 years before I ever got here, he had so much love in his heart, he left heaven and put on flesh, came down and died upon a rugged cross in order that... I'm so glad he cares. I'm, I'm, I'm so glad I got somebody, somebody that care about me. Cause some, sometimes you don't care about yourself. So, so have you ever? I ain't got about two or three people. Be honest. You know you were doing wrong. You know the path that you were going on wasn't no good. You know you shouldn't have done it, but you did it anyway. And at the end of that path, to find somebody that still love you. To find somebody that said, "Look here, look here," I, it never was based on how you act. I just love you. I'm so glad he cares. Look, you can stay in a relationship when you realize that it's not based upon you. If you're scared, the relationship gonna break up because if you mess up. If, if this happened then right here, then it's not going to be there. But when you know that the relationship is simply based upon the lover, not the lovey. Because, Brother George, that's how love works. And that's when you have to be real careful about who you love. Because when you love somebody, it makes you look like a fool. It makes you look like a fool. Uh huh. I know many folks probably tried to tell him, but you, they did not. One thing about it now, you ain't finna say too much to my mama about her children or her grandchildren. But folks will try to come on the slack. You see what I'm saying? Now they doing everything in the world about David for theirs, but they'll tell you what you ought not do for yours. And probably said, well look, that boy done got kicked out of three schools. He ain't that he drunk up there on the line and whatever. You need to leave that boy. I'll run up out of here, y'all. You need to leave that boy alone. You need to do that. But now here we are, 2016. Nothing but love, Cricket. Not, not perform. Not who you are. Not what you. I don't see no sign that that you gonna ever be my pastor. I don't see no sign that you gonna ever stand up and be a responsible sir. I don't see no sign. But I love you. But I love you. I'm so glad he cares. I'm I'm so glad he cares. Yeah, I need, Sister Angela, the Lord to care about me. And I don't need that to be based upon me. I, I don't need it because sometimes, bro, bro, the very thing that I said I ain't going to do no more, things that I thought that I had got over, th things that I thought that I wouldn't do, things that are surely not, I find myself right back in, in the same place. But when I know that he cares... <laughs> When I realized that God, your love for me never was dependent upon me doing anything, but you just love me. I said First Thessalonians. Okay, let's look. Sir. Let's look at one. First, first, first one. Look at verse nine. One and nine. The Bible says, for they themselves show of us what manner of inner end we had unto you and how you turned to God from idols to serve the living and the true God and to wait for his son from heaven whom he raised from the dead even Jesus which delivered us from what? 
from the wrath to come. The defamation of God. Folks always want to get up in church talking about how God going to get somebody. But the Bible says that Jesus delivered us from the wrath to come. Now, wrath is different from indignation. Indignation is when somebody does something and you just can't believe they did it. It's like, you know, do you know who I am? You got the wrong one. Uh, let me just come on to West Helena the then. I promise you, you don't want none of this. <laughs> That's indignation. But wrath comes from a Greek word, orge, which means a swelling to bursting. <laughs> wrath, Brother Jeff, is like when Popeye used to say, I done took all I can take and I can't take no more. <laughs> wrath is when it's too late. Wrath is when I've been holding this up out for you. You've been trying for a long time. My mom and them used to say that. You've been working on it. She used to tell us that sometimes. You working on it. And when it broke loose, my mom, bro, maybe you didn't love me as much as I thought you did. When she, when it broke loose, anything. I used to try to get smart and hide the extension cord. I know it's extension cord, but when she put it on me, it was a extension cord. I used to try to get smart and hide the statue cord. I ain't help none. She go find an iron, whatever got a cord on it. Come here. And I thank God my mama wasn't like some of y'all. She wasn't scared of a child. I thank God she wasn't scared of me. She said, oh no. I done fed you too long to be scared of you. I fed you too long to be scared of you. And so that, my mama whooped me after I got in college. So I don't care how big that. I've been six feet tall ever since I was 12 years old. With size 12, 13 shoes. They didn't make no difference. Uh-uh. She said, I'd rather whoop you than them other folk. You heard it. I'd rather whoop you than them folk whoop you down there. Delivered us from the wrath to come. Last verse. Turn over, let's see, let's look, let's look at Galatians. Y'all looking forward to this series? Yes, sir. The defamation of God. Yes, Lying on God. And then get mad because I don't want to come here. You don't never want to come to my church. I don't never want to come hear them lies. Say something. Say something. And then I'll come. I'm trying to get over the lies you already told. All right. <laughs> Galatians. But well, I tell you what, it sure does help to be 60 years old. It sure does. And then on part of it is, is that a lot of folks brought in that you know have died. And then when you see folks that dead, and you kind of remember what they was worrying about, you worried about Negroes that won't even call your name now. They never did care nothing about you. Oh, okay. I'm so glad he cares. I got Galatians. Galatians 1, 1 and 6. Very familiar. He says, I marvel that you are so soon removed from him. I'm, I'm almost sure. Let me tell you something. Let me just talk. This us. Mother, when God saved me, I didn't know nothing about A and B selection. I didn't know nothing about the order of service. I didn't know nothing about the bishop, the superintendent, the apostle. I didn't know nothing about none of that. All I knew was is that I was convicted in my heart. I was lost. I was convicted in my heart that nothing here would satisfy me. I had been shown that Jesus Christ was God Almighty and that he shed his blood for my sins. And I believed on it. And when I believed that, Brother Brewer, 
in the invisible, the spirit of God took me from where I was. Mm -hmm. The Bible says we've been translated out of the kingdom of darkness right. into the kingdom of his son. Yes. God himself, Hebrews 1, hit that. God himself, without any man's help, I heard the gospel. God used a man to preach about the death, burial, and resurrection, but without any man persuading me, the spirit himself, the Bible says in Hebrews 1 and 3, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of a power when he had by himself purged our sins. Yes. See, mother, I didn't even know my sins was gone. I didn't. So that's why I walked around with a sin consciousness. You see, that's the difference between some of these children that's raised in Helena and your child. Mm -hmm. You see, they got mad at my child, Dexter, when he was at, 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 at uh, the school he was going to because he did not believe like they thought that a little black kid was supposed to believe. You see? But when you believed that you've been purged of your sins, you no longer walk around with a sin consciousness. Instead of a sin consciousness, you have a God consciousness. You believe that no matter what you're going through, that God is still on your side. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That no matter how that you have acted today at work, you don't cuss out everybody at work with your sanctified self. Well, what you do is you don't have to justify that and say, well, I didn't say some of the words I used to say. <laughs> uh, I wouldn't have said it if she hadn't done it. You don't have to justify that. Because what you realize is, is that he, by himself, purged you of your sins. And so his grace is sufficient. He still cares for you. He still loves you. And that if you walk in the spirit, you will not fulfill the lust. I'm so glad he cares. Clap your hands for the Lord.